Welcome everyone, my name is Andrew. This is Article 3, Sections 1 through 7 of the National Master Contract. Today we are covering Article 3, Scope of the Agreement, Section 1, Recognition, Section 2, Union Shop and Dues, Section 3, Dues Checkoff and Joint Dues Committee, Section 4, Work Assignments, Section 5, Section 6, and Section 7, Supervisors Working. If you want to skip ahead straight to the reading, go ahead and click on the timestamp in the description. As well, below, you can find a link to the UPS Teamster contract, or if you have not already, you can also download the UPS Teamsters app on Android or the Apple Store. This app includes the contract with a handy search function that allows you to find articles and sections immediately important to your situation. The next 20 minutes or so will be important, and I know that I say that really frequently, and I know that all of the contract is important, but this article should be bookmarked in your contract. And that is because of Article 3, Section 7. It is one of the more commonly cited articles when it comes to grievances, since we all see supervisors working every day. You know, I'm not a shop steward, but it never hurts to be observant or curious. And that is why you are here with me today. You have decided it is time to learn our contract and become formidable with the knowledge to protect your rights. And I want to thank you for joining me today. And with that, let us begin. Article 3, Recognition, Union Shop, and Checkoff. Section 1, Recognition, Subsection A. The employer recognizes and acknowledges that the National Union Committee and local unions affiliated with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters are the exclusive representatives of all employees of the employer in covered classifications. The employees and unions covered under this master agreement and the various supplements, riders, and addenda thereto shall constitute one bargaining unit. Subsection B. When the employer needs additional employees, it shall give the union equal opportunity with all other sources to provide suitable applicants, but the employer shall not be required to hire those referred by the union. If employees are hired through an employment agency, the employer shall pay the employment agency fee, if any, due from the employee. However, if the union has been given equal opportunity to furnish employees as provided herein, and if the employee is retained through the probationary period, this fee need not be paid until the 31st day of employment, except as otherwise provided in local union supplements, riders, and addenda. Business agents and or a steward shall be permitted to attend new employee orientations to talk about the benefits of union membership. The employer agrees to provide the local union at least one week's notice of the date, time, and location of such orientation. Upon request, the union representative will be given a list of the names of the employees attending orientation no later than at the meeting. The sole purpose of the business agent's or steward's attendance shall be to encourage new employees to join the union. The steward shall remain on the clock for up to 15 minutes for that purpose if the orientation is held during his or her normal working hours at his or her normal place of work. Section 2. Union Shop and Dues Subsection A. All present employees who are members of the local union on the effective date of this subsection, or on the date of execution of this agreement, whichever is the later, shall remain members of the local union in good standing as a condition of employment. In order to assist the local unions in maintaining current and accurate membership records, the employer will furnish the appropriate local union a list of new employees. The employer agrees to notify the local union when a new employee attains seniority. This notification will be made in conjunction with the new employee listing. The list will include the name, address, social security number, date of hire, hub or center to which assigned, shift, and classification or position hired into. The employer shall also notify the local union when the employee is promoted from part-time to full-time. The list will be provided on a monthly basis. All present employees who are not members of the local union and all employees who are hired thereafter shall become and remain members in good standing of the local union as a condition of employment on and after the 31st day following the beginning of their employment or on and after the 31st day following the effective date of this subsection or the date of this agreement, whichever is the later. An employee who has failed to acquire or thereafter maintain membership in the union as herein provided shall be terminated 72 hours after the employer has received a written notice from an authorized representative of the local union certifying that membership has been and is continuing to be offered to such employees on the same basis as all other members 
and further that the employee has had notice and opportunity to make all dues or initiation fee payments. This provision shall be made and become effective as of such time as it may be made and become effective under the provision of the National Labor Relations Act, but not retroactively. Subsection B. No provision of Section 2A of this article shall apply to the extent that it may be prohibited by state law. In those states where subsection A above may not be validly applied, the employer agrees to recommend to all new employees that they become members of the union and maintain such membership during the life of this agreement. Section 3. Dues Checkoff and Joint Dues Committee The union and the employer will establish a joint dues committee to review the deduction and remittance of union dues. This committee is charged with the responsibility of ensuring that dues are accurately deducted and remitted in a timely manner to the local unions. It is anticipated that this committee shall serve as a source of continuing study regarding the most efficient, accurate, and expeditious deduction and payments of dues, including exploring electronic solutions. The union and the employer will establish procedures for the operation of this committee. No existing bargaining unit employee currently performing work in the payroll department will be laid off or suffer a loss of their current payroll type position as a result of this section. The employer agrees to deduct from the pay of all employees covered by this agreement the initiation fees, dues, and or uniform assessments of the local union having jurisdiction over such employees. The local union will provide the employer a weekly amount to be deducted from each employee. The local union will individually specify the weekly amount to be deducted for initiation fees, union dues, and or assessments. For initiation fees and assessments, the local union will notify the employer the number of weeks these deductions are being taken from the employee. Notification of deductions to be made by the employer for the benefit of the local union must be received at least one month prior to the date the deduction is to be made. The obligation for the local union to provide this information shall be satisfied by the transmission of a computer file in mutually agreeable format. The employer shall deduct the weekly dues from each vacation week. This will be implemented within six months of ratification of this agreement. The employer shall make no deductions that are not listed on the local union's monthly or weekly checkoff statement in those locations which send a checkoff statement to the employer. In the event the employer improperly deducts too much dues money, the amount improperly withheld shall be remitted to the involved employees on the second scheduled workday following notification of the employer. The local union shall return any overpayment to the employer within one week following a written notification from the employer. The employer will provide a remittance to the local union within 15 days following the check date the deduction was taken. With each remittance, the employer shall submit a report, by center and or sort, listing all employees alphabetically with their social security numbers and job classification. For those employees who have no deduction for the week, the employer will provide a reason in the event the local union does not want to receive a weekly remittance. The employer will provide a monthly remittance by the 15th day of the following month. However, if this option is chosen, the employer will still make weekly deductions as described above. The employer will provide a list of peak season employees to the local union. The company agrees to honor the dues checkoff cards for peak season employees. Where law requires written authorization by the employee, the same is to be furnished in the form required. No deduction shall be made which is prohibited by applicable law. Any local union shall have the option of monthly deductions with monthly remittance on or before the 15th day of the same month. On written request of the employee, payroll deductions will be made to purchase U.S. saving bonds for said employee. The employer agrees to deduct from the paycheck of all employees covered by this agreement voluntary contributions to DRIVE. DRIVE shall notify the employer of the amounts designated by each contributing employee that are to be deducted from his or her paycheck on a weekly basis for all weeks worked. The phrase, weeks worked, excludes any week other than a week in which the employee earned a wage. The employer shall transmit to DRIVE National Headquarters on a monthly basis in one check the total amount deducted along with the name of each employee on whose behalf a deduction is made, the employee's social security number, and the amount deducted from that employee's paycheck. The International Brotherhood of Teamsters shall reimburse the employer annually for the employer's actual cost for the expenses incurred in administering the weekly payroll deduction plan. The employer agrees to deduct certain specific amounts each week from the wages of those employees who shall have given the employer written notice to make such deductions. The employer will remit amounts deducted to the applicable credit union once each week. The amounts so deducted shall be remitted to the applicable credit union once each month or weekly. 
The employer shall not make deductions and shall not be responsible for remittance to the credit union for any deductions for those weeks during which the employee's earnings shall be less than the amount authorized for deductions. In the event the employer has been determined to be in violation of this article by a decision in the grievance procedure, and if such employer subsequently is in violation thereof, after receipt of 72 hours written notice of specific delinquencies, the local union may strike to enforce this article. However, such strike shall be terminated upon the delivery thereof. Errors or an inadvertent omissions relating to individual employees shall not constitute a violation. Section 4. Work Assignments the employer agrees to respect the jurisdictional rules of the union and, except as otherwise provided in this master agreement, supplements, riders, or addenda, shall not direct or require their employees or persons other than the employees in the bargaining units here involved to perform work which is recognized as the work of the employees in said units. This is not to interfere with the bona fide agreements with bona fide unions. The employer further agrees not to combine into a single job work presently performed by members of one Teamster local union with work presently performed by members of another Teamster local union. Section 5. The term local union as used herein refers to the IBT local union which represents the employees of the employer at the particular place or places of business to which this agreement and the supplements, riders, or addenda thereto are applicable, unless by agreement by the local unions involved or by directive issued pursuant to the IBT International Constitution. Section 6. Employees shall have the option of participating in the employer's electronic funds transfer, EFT the employer's check card payment system, or a paper payroll check system. New employees, defined as employees who are not on the payroll on the date of ratification, shall designate either EFT or a check card, unless prohibited by applicable state law. New employees shall make this election during orientation. Recognizing the mutual benefits and advantages of these systems over a paper payroll check, the union agrees to encourage all employees to select either EFT or a check card as a method of payment. No bargaining unit employee currently performing work in the payroll department will be laid off or suffer a loss of their current payroll type position as a result of this section. Section 7. Supervisors Working Subsection A. The employer agrees that the function of supervisors is the supervision of employees and not the performance of the work of the employees they supervise. Accordingly, the employer agrees that supervisors or other employees of the employer who are not members of the bargaining unit shall not perform any bargaining unit work, except to train employees or demonstrate safety, or as otherwise provided in the applicable supplement, rider, or addendum. However, in the case of acts of God, supervisors shall comply with the procedures in subsections B and C and may only perform bargaining unit work until bargaining unit employees are available. The employer shall make every reasonable effort to maintain a sufficient workforce to staff its operations with bargaining unit employees. The employer also agrees that supervisors or other employees of the employer who are not members of the bargaining unit shall not perform bargaining unit work in preparing the work areas before the start of the employer's hub, preload, or reload operation, nor shall the employer send any bargaining unit employee home and then have such employees work performed by a supervisor or other employees of the employer who are not a member of the bargaining unit. Subsection B. When additional employees are necessary to complete the employer's operations on any shift or within any classification, the supervisor shall exhaust all established local practices to first use bargaining unit employees including where applicable, double shifting, early call-in, and overtime. Subsection C. If there is no established local practice, the following shall apply with regard to inside work. Within each building, each operation will maintain appropriate lists by seniority of those part-time employees requesting coverage work. It will be the employee's responsibility to sign up on the appropriate list. The company shall post such list and employees who are interested in adding their names to the list shall do so on the first working day of each month. It will be the employee's responsibility to make sure his her contact information is correct. Employees who are unavailable to work on three separate occasions within a calendar month shall have their names removed from the coverage list. Those employees shall be eligible to re-sign the list the following month. When coverage work is available, the company will use the appropriate list to fill the required positions and such employees will work as assigned. The employee must be qualified for the available work and double shift employees shall have seniority among themselves. No employee is allowed to work more than two shifts in any 24 hour period. Local call verification practices and procedures shall remain in place. Nothing contained in this section shall change existing practices or procedures covering full-time work. Subsection D. 
If it is determined at any step of the grievance and or arbitration procedure that this section or a supervisor working provision in a supplement right or addendum has been violated, the aggrieved employee will be paid as follows. Sub sub section I. If the actual hours worked by the supervisor amounts to two hours or less, the aggrieved employee will be paid for the actual hours worked by the supervisor at the rate of double time the employee's rate of pay at the time of the incident. Or sub sub section double I. If the supervisor works more than two hours, the aggrieved employee shall be paid for four hours at straight time or actual hours worked at double time the employee's rate of pay at the time of the incident, whichever is greater. If no aggrieved employee can be identified, the payment will be made to the grievant. Such remedy shall be in addition to any other remedies sought by the union in the appropriate grievance procedure. If a supplement, rider, or addendum does not have a provision requiring notice to the steward when a supervisor works the following shall be incorporated. In the event a supervisor does perform bargaining unit work, the employer shall notify the appropriate shop steward as soon as possible. In the event that any individual supervisor is found to be in violation of the first paragraph of this subsection three times in any nine-month rolling period, the grievance shall be paid at triple time the employee's rate of pay for the hours specified in the first paragraph of this subsection.